Well, good morning, Sylvester Community Church. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, my name is Matt Oberlin, um, soon to be the Director of Global Football Ministry uh, with Athletes in Action. Um, you'll see here in a second uh, a picture, hopefully, of uh, my beautiful family. Uh, my wife, Emily, our identical twin sons, Lincoln and Landon, uh, they are six, and then Killian just turned three last week. So uh, we, are, we are super excited uh, about this new ministry uh, that God has called our family to. Uh, it has been a long journey, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk through that um, as, as we go through. Um, but it's, it's been an exciting time for us. So how did, how did a kid from, still a kid, I call myself a kid, I'm 41 years old, but uh, how did a kid from Dayton, Ohio, drive five hours uh, and is, is here in Sylvester, uh, Michigan right now? I'm actually a local. Uh, I'm a country boy from Montcalm County, uh, grew up in Greenville. Um, and connection to the church, uh, my cousins, uh, Russ and Michelle uh, Nelson, who many of you know, um, connected, connected me to, to this church. I, I met with Russ via Zoom, obviously out in Seattle, uh, about two months ago, um, and, and shared what we were doing, and he was so excited that he introduced me to uh, Pastor Simon, uh, and we talked, and, and we set up the time to come here. Um, so that's, that's how it started. The, the fun thing about this is I have learned in that three weeks since we, we picked this date that my family is, is deeply connected to this church. Um, my mother sitting in the front row, September Oberlin, and my grandmother were both baptized here. My grandmother in Gummer's Pond, I just learned about Gummer's Pond <laughs> this morning. Uh, my grandmother was baptized through S Sylvester Community Church in Gummer's Pond forever ago. So uh, I, I just find it amazing, is the right word, how, how God can weave these things together. It started with a conversation uh, with my cousin, you know, three months ago, I think it was back in May or something along those lines, and then to, to find out that we are a family that goes back, I mean, it's got to be 60, 70 years or something along that, that lines, uh, when, when grandma was, <laughs> my Aunt Georgiana says not to say age, so, uh, so she, she doesn't want to use those numbers, but it, it's an honor to be here um, pulling in this morning. I, I've never been to Sylvester Community Church, but we uh, vacationed at uh, school section like every summer. So I've driven through Sylvester, stopped at King's for ice cream many times in my life. So um, it, it just felt special uh, as, soon as, as soon as we got here. So um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, thank you for um, the path that this church set my family on decades ago. And that's the impact that we can have. We don't know that, right? It's, we, it's the seed. We plant the seed, God grows the seed, and it went through my mom. I went to church every single Sunday, Calvary Baptist Church in Greenville, Michigan, because of the, the seeds that were planted by this church decades ago. So thank you for letting us be here. Um, our ministry, uh, I'd like to start where I, I believe we should always start, and that's the Word of God. Um, we've, we've all heard of the Great Commission, right, Matthew uh, chapter 28. I want to read that to you and, and just talk maybe a little bit differently about what the Great Commission is, because uh, I think we've all heard these, these verses. So Matthew chapter 28, I'm actually going to start in 17. I know it's, it's 18 on there, but uh, verse 17, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. So this is Jesus coming back to his disciples in Galilee. That, that's where we are right now. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. So a couple of things, again, we've, we've all heard this probably a hundred times. Um, but a couple of things to, to just point out. Verse 17, they saw him. His disciples, who had been with him for years, saw Jesus in front of them, and they still doubted. That, that's powerful, because I, I think, I think that, that sums up exactly what or how amazing the resurrection of Christ actually is. These were like his closest confidants, and he's right there in front of them. 
And there's, there's still some level of doubt because this, this man has risen from the dead and he is back here with us. So let, let's, let's use that. All authority in him and on earth has been given to me, therefore go. So there's, there's three parts here. One, God reminds them, Jesus reminds them, verse 17, who he is. Then there's a command here, the word go, and we'll talk about that in a second. But then at the end, he reassures them, I am with you. I will be with you as you do this thing that I am asking you to do. So the word go in the Great Commission. I think a lot of times when we read or study the Great Commission, a, a lot of people get paralyzed. They get paralyzed by this fear of the word go because they, there's this perception that the word go means that I have to go to Uganda or I have to go serve um, the atheist community in East Germany, right, that, that, that doesn't know God and doesn't want to know God. We get paralyzed by this, this distance that we perceive the word go to be. What if we turn that around and, and I told you that go isn't a distance, but go is an action. You're commanded to go. You're commanded to do God's work wherever it is you are. For me, that starts with a picture that was up there before. That starts with my kids. That starts with my wife. That starts in my community. That starts in our church. That starts, go is not a distance. So let's remove that paralyzing fear of the Great Commission that I can't do anything unless God sends me somewhere. Because th that, that stops a vast majority of Christians immediately in this command that we have of the, of the Great Commission. The last words that Jesus says to us <laughs> before, to his disciples is go, go do my work, baptize. So we, we all want, I, I want, I'm sure everyone, I want heaven to be full. I want it to be crowded. I want there to be a lot of people. I want it to be, like, we want as many people there as possible. So we have to do that. We have to go. So that's, that's the basis of, of kind of what we'll talk about today. The Great Commission, let's think about it a little differently as, as we talk through um, what we're, what we're going to talk through today. So Athletes in Action. Has anyone ever heard of Athletes in Action? Couple people, all right, sweet. Uh, Athletes in Action uh, is an organization. It's a ministry of Crew Campus Crusades for Christ. Um, some of you may have may have heard of that. That's the uh, Crew is uh, eighty years old at this point, something along those lines. Um, Athletes in Action uses the platform of athletics, sports, to spread the gospel. So um, the the mission of Athletes in Action. Uh, we want a Christ follower on every team, in every sport, in every nation. And if there's a Christ follower on every team, in every sport, in every nation, now that, that network, that web of Christ followers, the influence is, is massive. Because in some form or fashion, we're all connected to a sport. We've all played a sport or we've done something along those lines. So that platform of, of athletics is, is, a, is a massive platform that we can use. So our family, <laughs> this fun story, this, this for our family um, is we're over two years now of this journey to Athletes in Action. Uh, it started back in the summer of 2022. Um, I started to get this, this feeling. We've got those, those feelings, right? The stirring uh, and I actually talked to Emily and I said, hey, I think at that time I had been in college athletics for 17 years, only full-time job I've ever had. Um, I, I think there's something different coming. We didn't know what that was at the time. Uh, we prayed about it. She was starting to feel that a little bit. We had just moved our family from Michigan to Ohio. Uh, I was working at Cleveland State University at the time. It was like 18 months after we had moved there. So we were like, well, what do you mean? We're, we're going, <laughs> there's something else. But this two-year journey of being um, faithful and obedient and listening, listening and hearing what God had in store for us, um, I, I think is, is a massive part of, of our ministry and what we are all called to do. 
So through that process, we were, we were uh, asked to, to apply for a, a full-time job with Athletes in Action, a salaried position, not a missionary role uh, like, like we're uh, starting now. Um, that was an eight-month process that we were told we were the right one. We were, it was our job. We had actually already contacted our realtor. We were all good to go. And then we got a call that we weren't. They chose somebody else. Eight and a half months of our lives preparing to move. We were devastated. I was devastated. I'll, I'll never forget it. It was a Wednesday afternoon. I'm in my office at Cleveland State University. I got that phone call. I was excited. I saw it. It was a search firm. All right, here we go. Let's... Let's lock this thing in. That's not the way the call went. And I broke down and was weeping in my office. And in that moment, my heart and Emily's heart, she would tell you this if she was here as well, completely hardened. Hardened to athletes in action? Like, what, what have you done to us for the past eight months, right? You, you've drug us along, Emily had gone down and visited, I had gone down a couple times, like it was, a, it was a done deal. And if I'm being transparent, pretty hardened to the Lord. Because this, this whole thing, it was, it was almost too good to be true. Like I went there uh, on the interview, I remember this, the night before my interview, I'd just gotten on campus, our international headquarters are down in Xenia, Ohio, just out of Dayton, and I called Emily. I'd been there eight minutes, maybe, I called them and I said, this is home. This is, this is where our family is going to be and serve, and I'm excited about that. Fast forward, as you can, you can tell, that, that was the answer. But God's timing is perfect. Um, we've all had those, those times in our lives where we think, we use our brain to think, to put together a timeline of what we think God's plan is for us. So throughout this two years, it was amazing to see God work through this. We had, I think the number is seven different job offers all over the country. Oregon, Texas, Tennessee, New York, Virginia, Cleveland, a second job in Cleveland, and I'm, I'm missing one, Mississippi. All jobs that we thought were great, some very, very lucrative. And it was amazing to watch God just gently close a door and then Athletes in Action would pop back up, whether it was a phone call or just running into someone in Athletes in Action and then another door was closed. And he was just weaving us, softening our hearts again because that, that, that hardened of heart was still there, weaving us back to, to where we ended up or where we will end up as, as we go through this. Um, it's amazing. It's been amazing to watch uh, God work through a little country boy from Montcalm County, Michigan, um, to be the, the director of global football ministry. That is exactly what it sounds. Our family is going to lead Athletes in Action's football ministry, anything to do with the sport of football, worldwide. And I don't say that in, in, a, in a pompous way or, or bragging. I say that because if we're obedient, we're, Emily and I and Lincoln and Landon and Killian are no different than anyone in this room. I've never been to a single minute of seminary training anywhere. I've never, I've, none of those things. I'm just a kid from Michigan, and yet, God. So I, I, I want you to, to think about that in your life. And, and as we, we talk more through this, like our God is greater. And he can use anyone in this room for anything that he wants to use you for if you are willing to listen and willing to be obedient to the calling in God's life or God, calling for you in your life from God. It, it's amazing. It, 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 I get choked up. Uh, I, I lose my word sometimes when I tell the story, which for those that, that know me, um, that's difficult for me to lose words. I, I can talk for a while. Um, but this kid from, this kid from Michigan, uh, family all over Lakeview and Macosta County and Greenville, I'm an Imhoff. I don't know if, if you know an Imhoff. I'm, like, that could be good or bad, depending on <laughs> if, you, if you know the Imhoffs. 
the Imhoffs in the room are, are laughing because there's, there's some truth to that. But through what we thought, a hardened heart, listening, praying, being obedient, this two-year journey that frankly has been very difficult on our family. And yet, here we are. Here we are. So specifically our ministry. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's, let's, a little interactive time. Raise your hand if you played or coached the sport of football. Okay, all right, keep your hands up. Raise your hand if you know somebody who played or coached the sport of football. Raise your hand if you've ever watched football on TV or in person. <laughs> That's almost everybody in this room. This ministry is for everybody. The platform is football. 95% of the people in this room just raised their hand that they have some connection to the sport of football. So this, this is not just for coaches. This is not just for athletes. It's not just for the 300-pound offensive linemen that you see on TV and, and, and those things. We're going to use the, the platform of football to spread the word. So you can see that up here a little bit. So how, we, how are we going to do this? The win, build, send kind of mentality. We're going to win pe- these. We're going to win people for Christ. We're going to build them up as total athletes. You'll hear us say the word total athlete a lot. It's not just about uh, making them faster and making them stronger and giving them the tools that they can get to the NFL and then magically they're going to, um, you know, have an impact or be a mentor or a leader. It's the total athlete. We're going to develop you uh, so you can run a faster 40, but we're also going to develop you as a, uh, as a better leader. We're going to develop you emotionally. We're going to develop you spiritually. So we're going to win you for Christ. We're going to build you up as this, this total athlete, this complete person that has the tools that we can send you back to where you call home, back to your locker room, back to the team that you coach, back to whatever that might be so that you can be the light in a very, very, very dark place. See, football, it looks fun on TV, and it is. I played college football. It's great. But those that have played football or have been in a football locker room could attest to this, and I'll tell you that it is one of the darkest places on this earth. The things that happen in a football locker room or the the conversations that are had or the, the... the culture that is built, it is very difficult for a person of faith, for someone that believes, to stand up and be a light in that darkness. That, my story is that. I told you, I went to Calvary Baptist Church every Sunday. I was, I was a Christian. I was baptized, saved. I was baptized with my father. All of the things. If you, if you looked at my life, good Christian boy. Go to college? Not so much. Because the influences, specifically of the sport of football, broke me down so quickly. 1.7 GPA my freshman year, almost failed out of school, had to take a a spring class the month of May and had to get an A or I was going to get kicked out of school. I lost all my scholarships, so I was paying $27,000 a year at a private school in, in Elma to go to college, second year, 1.8. I'm hanging on by a thread because that foundation I didn't have, I didn't think I had. Let me, let me correct myself. I look back now as, as I start this ministry, as we start this ministry, as God starts this ministry, I can identify probably four people that tried to be that light for me, that tried to pull me along, tried to get me to come to Bible study, tried to do all those things, but I wasn't strong enough or uh, I didn't have my eyes open enough. I wasn't wise enough to see that, to walk away from the devil, walk away from the alcohol, walk away from the drugs, walk away from the girls, walk away from all of the things that prevented me from, from being a strong Christian and therefore being a light for others. See, football, football is a dark place. 
it's, it's dark for those reasons. It's dark in the, in the, this idea of trying to compete, this, you know, in sports, you're trying to compete, you're going to fail, you fail more than you succeed. I didn't win the starting job, uh, I got injured, I got, whatever those things are, if, you, if these kids, these athletes don't have the tools to, to be strong enough to get through that, they don't have the resources to, to find someone to, to do that, to help them get through that, they're gonna end up just the way I ended up at Alma College. And they're gonna spiral out of control, and it's a very difficult road to, to, to recover from. So that's, that's the idea. We're going to build these athletes up, and we're going to start at a young age. We're going to have a youth division. We're going to have a high school division, a college division, a pro division. We're going to start young and, and show these athletes how it is to, to play the sport that you love, but you can do that while being... Um, a strong Christian. You can do that while pulling your teammates along with you and being, being a leader. So we're, win, build, send. You, you see that there. The, the other side, I have learned since starting this role, fun fact, American football is now played in an organized fashion in 120 countries worldwide. So the, the, the potential of the network, of the spread that we can use um, to bring people to Christ it is growing. So 440 million fans of the sport of football worldwide, 1.5 million athletes. Our goal, the, the basis of what, we're go, what we are going to do through God's grace, when those 440 million fans watch and look up to those 1.5 million athletes, our goal is that every single one of those 1.5 million athletes is openly looking up to the one true God. Because if they are, and their influence on those 1.5 million, or I'm sorry, that if the 1.5 million are doing that, and they have the influence on the 440 million people that are watching them do that, man, imagine what God can do with that. So that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going we're gonna to build you build the, these kids up. We want to tell people about Jesus. And we're going to use the sport of football to do that. You know, I was, I was driving. Uh, I stayed at my sister's house uh, over on Derby Lake. And I was driving in this morning just listening. And this wasn't a part of my original message, but a song came on the radio. I think it's Annie Wilson, maybe. And it just summed this up in a way that, that music is near and dear to my heart. The, the tagline in that song, the, the chorus, let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to tell people about Jesus, and, and Jesus will change their lives. The other fun thing that we get to do, that, that, that I love to do as we tell people about this ministry, is, is I stand in front of a congregation like this, or uh, whoever I, I get the, the honor of talking to, um, is we get to invite people into participation in the Great Commission. If we go back to Matthew 28 that we just talked about, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations and teaching them to obey. And surely I am with you to the very end of age. It doesn't just say, John, go, or Matthew, go, or Peter, go. He's talking to all of us. See, we're all invited, we're all called to participate in the Great Commission. There are, there are three ways that you can participate in the Great Commission. You can pray, you can send, or you can go. My family has been called to go. Not every family is called to go. Not every family is called to be missionaries. Not every family is called to, to be the hands and the feet, to, to do the work but every family, every person is called to participate in the Great Commission. So we can't get this, this part wrong. It's not optional for us to participate in the Great Commission. God doesn't say, hey, if it's convenient for you, please go and help expand the kingdom of God. Or if, if you have enough money, please go and, and, and help people find Jesus. It's not optional 
And I think we get that wrong. We, we, see, this, we, we see this verse and, and we think, well, that's not me. So, okay, well, what other verse? What other? I, I can love my neighbor. Like, I like that one, right? That one's easy for me. I, I'll, I'll do that one. That's, that's not how this works. And I think we forget that. And I think we're, we're so easy to pick and choose the convenient parts of this, this guide, this instruction manual that we are given, that we forget about the ones that maybe are a little bit more difficult or maybe are a little bit more uncomfortable or maybe don't seem to fit my way of thinking of how I want my life to be. And, and I was that way for a long time. I, if you had asked me two years ago, three years ago, ten years ago, there was no chance no chance that I was going to be a missionary in, in raising support to support our family. In fact, it, really fun story. When I met my wife eight years ago, before, I think it was right after we got engaged, or right about the time we got engaged, there was a chance for me to join Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, as a missionary. And Emily looked at me and she said, no chance. Her dad was a pastor. And she said, no chance. I'm not doing that. If you're going to do that, we're not going to be, like, it's, it's this or that. And, and it's, it's funny how full circle those things come, right? Where it was, there was no doubt. There was no doubt when we decided to do this about a year ago, and we've been raising our support for, for about nine months now, she was the first one. Emily was the first one to jump in and say, let's go. Let's do this. I, th- I think... I think we get that wrong sometimes. I think we get wrong this idea that, that we're not supposed to, or we're, we're not called to the Great Commission. That's not us. Three ways. Pray. Pray for the thousands of missionaries all over this world that are doing those things in Uganda, in Germany, in South America, in inner city schools, in wherever they are called to be. Pray. You can send. How do I send? We're called to tithe, right? I don't like the word tithe. Tithe seems like a um, something that we're we're being told to do. It's like a hey, you have to do this thing, pull you along, like joyfully give to whatever organization you're a part of, this church, um, whatever you, wherever you have passions, joyfully give to the Lord so that the Lord can give to those missionaries. Or maybe you are called to go. Maybe there are some people in this room that are called to go. And don't think that, you know, just your stage of life exempts you from that. I went through training when I came on board with crew. Couple 71 and 70 left their jobs and are now going to go be missionaries uh, in Texas. I think they're doing a a mission in Texas. 71 and 70. God had called them, and they were obedient, and they walked away from a very nice life that they had, a very comfortable life, and they're serving the Lord now. So pray through that. Pray through that. I I, I want to close with... um, I'm going to go a little Old Testament, if that's okay. Do we, do we do Old Testament in the, in the country church? I love it. I love it. So, the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers, chapter 18, 20 through 24. I'm going to read this. This is this idea of sending, right? This, this, where, where there are missionaries who have to go, and they need the support of those that can send. This is not a new concept. This is not something that, you know, in the 21st century, this model, this goes all the way back to the creation of the 12 tribes way back when, specifically the Levites. So we're going to just, I want to read this, verse 20 through 24 in the 18th chapter of Numbers. The Lord said to Aaron, you will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share in your inheritance among the Israelites. So this is where where God is divvying up all of the inheritance, the land, the goats, the cattle, all of the things to the 12 tribes, and he looks at the Levites and he says, 
you don't get any of that. Because you're going to serve. You're going to serve me. You're going to serve the, the tent of meeting, right? That's, a, that's what it was then. You're going to serve in the tent, and you, I will be your inheritance. So if we continue on, I give to the Levites all the tithes of Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting. From now on, Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting or they will bear consequences for their sin and will die. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility of any of the offenses they commit against it. This is a lasting ordinance for generations to come. They will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance. This model was set up by God centuries ago. There are people all over the world doing the work that the Levites were doing way back then. And their inheritance, their support, their way of living, their food, their clothing, their everything comes directly from the 11 other tribes and the inheritance and their joyful giving that they were called by the Lord to give. There are thousands and thousands of missionaries across this world that need people just like you who are joyfully giving to places just like this to support them as they go out and be the hands and the feet and do the work of God. One heat of caution, and this, this, is, this is from us. When you decide that you are actively going to participate in the, in the Great Commission, I'm going to tell you something. There is an enemy who is real. Spiritual warfare is real. November of last year, our family made the commitment, signed on the line, whatever you want to say, we are going to be missionaries for Athletes in Action. I cannot verbalize well the amount of turmoil, the amount of struggle, the financial hits, the car breaks down, the water heater goes out. Our kids are struggling so bad with this transition. Lincoln getting kicked out of class. Like it, it has been nonstop spiritual warfare. It's because the devil's nervous. And he's going to be nervous, and he's going to attack you. He's going to, to come at you at some stage in your life. It's real but God, and he will get you through that. He is getting us through it actively every single day. Uh, part of the reason why Emily's not here is we couldn't leave Lincoln because he struggled so much in school, in his new school. We just moved five weeks ago. Been kicked out of his class four times in three weeks. Never had that issue in his life. Flipping tables. Emily is distraught. As a mother who, who loves her son, I love my son as well, don't, don't take me wrong. Um, she's distraught over it. It's just another attack. And we'll pray our way through it, and we'll get through it, and it'll be fine. Because he, the devil won't win. He's not going to win this battle. Uh, because we're called to greater things. So my, my ask of you, final slide, I promise. Uh, I said I was getting 15 minutes. It's been way more than 15 minutes. <laughs> Will you prayerfully consider partnering with our family? And if not our family, this is not about Matt and Emily openly. Prayerfully, when you go home tonight or this afternoon, and when you say your prayers tonight or you say your prayers tomorrow, throughout the week, pray on how God is calling you to participate in the Great Commission. If, if it's blessed enough to be a prayer warrior for our family or monetary support for our family, praise God but it's not about our family. It's about all of the missionaries and all of the people that are doing God's work that need the support of people like you. 
Uh, my contact information is up here. That QR code takes you to our, our page if you, if you want to, to learn more. We'll have information um, in, in the back afterwards. But I'll leave you with this. Just remember, your participation in the Great Commission and our call in life is not optional. Just like many things that we talk about, many things that are talked about in this, this great book, this great instruction manual, it's not optional. So your prayer to God, how will you use me? Not will you, how will you? Because we're all called to participate in the Great Commission. And if we don't, we're not expanding the word of God, we're not expanding the kingdom of God, and we're, if we're not doing that, why are we here as Christians? Thank you for letting me uh, to come here. Uh, we're, we're very excited to, to uh, be connected to Sylvester Community Church, um, and it's a super exciting time. Uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you. Uh, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for another day on, on this earth. Lord, thank you for the connection to Sylvester Community Church. Lord, thank you for your words today. Thank you for speaking through me uh, for a lot longer than 15 minutes. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that, 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 that your words were for somebody, many people in this room, to actively pursue you, Lord, to actively hear your calling on their life and how they should participate in one of the greatest commands that you have given us. Go. Help us to be people that are willing to go. And whatever that means in our life, help us to trust you that we will go and further the kingdom of our one true God. Thank you for the people in this room. Thank you for, for their hearts and their minds. Thank you for the way that you will use them. Thank you for the way that you are using Sylvester Community Church, Lord. We thank you for, for all of this and all the blessings in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's do this. Uh, we're going to close shortly, but before we do, this is very important. What Matt has shared obviously is pertinent to every single one of us in this uh, room. Uh, we all belong to the king. We're children of the creator of the universe, and he has a mission for us. And it might just be where your family is, might be where your job is or where you're retired, but go is a verb. We just heard that from someone, didn't we? <laughs> go is a verb. Go is in the word God. You go in God where he's planted you. Um, let's pray for Matt now. Let's pray for his family. Um, let me just pray for you. Father in heaven, thank you for the blessing and the privilege of being called your children, Lord, that uh, we're all missionaries. Uh, none of us are home yet. We're all living away from home. Our home is with you in heaven. And here we are in this strange foreign country, as Hebrews 11 calls it. And here we are, pilgrims and sojourners, uh, as we wander, whether it's through jobs or family life or retirement, um, whatever life season we are in, we are wandering as pilgrims for you. We are all going, and Lord, help us to go in the spirit as you lead us. Lord, uh, we think of Matt. Lord, thank you for the way that you've called him, uh, his family. Uh, and Lord, as they <laughs> really get into this time of transition, Lord, I pray for your protection over them. Lord, we pray for, for Emily, Lord, that you'd encourage her and give her the resources for her kids. Uh, Lord, Matt, the same thing, and, and all the things that you have for them. We pray for little Lincoln, specifically Lincoln, Lord, that you would encourage his heart, that you would strengthen him, Lord, his mind, and Lord, that uh, you would protect him, and Lord, that he'd start to discover a joy in this new season of his life, Lord, uh, remove any confusion or anger or inability to communicate, and bless that little one, Lord, that he would become strong in you, Lord, the whole family, and for wisdom for Matt and Emily as they proceed forward. And ultimately, we pray, Lord, that you would establish the work of their fingers, Lord, that this would become a ministry that not only gets established, but it grows exponentially and very quickly. So many that need to hear the gospel, and so many that uh, watch the sports uh, of football. And Lord, we pray that this would be the avenue for you to be glorified and for many to come into the kingdom of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. And bless Matt and his uh, wider family as they get together for the rest of the time that he's up here visiting. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.